fall, our church will regather as community in person. I'm very particular about using that word regather rather than the word reopen. Because reopen implies that the church closed. And the church, of course, we know has not closed because the church is not this building. The church is the body of Jesus Christ, the body to which we all belong. And our ministries have thrived and continued during this time. From our community meal, our food pantry, our outreach efforts, our Bible studies, all of these things have continued, along with the work of our volunteers and our dedicated church staff. But I do want to take just a moment for you to spend a minute or two watching this video so that you can see what things will look like when we gather in person, when we come back to our beautiful sanctuary that we have not gathered in since early March, and it's been so long, and I know we're all so excited. Just want to hit some of the highlights in this to make sure that we keep safe as we possibly can during these next days to come. Okay, so we're gonna bring this all the way back to our homes and start at the very beginning. So I've woken up this morning, I've gotten dressed, and I've decided that I am going to go to church. Today is the day that I get to return to in-person gatherings at West Park United Church of Christ. So before I leave my home, make sure that I turn on my faucet, soap up, and wash my hands with hot water for at least 20 seconds. Um, this is going to be a good way to keep us all safe and protected in the days to come. Now, obviously that wasn't 20 seconds, but this is for um, instruction only. So my hands are washed, and then I want to take my temperature. And I've got all sorts of thermometers. Scott and I have an ear thermometer. So I'm going to take my temperature, and I'm at 96.9. So I'm good to go. And I generally run a little cool with my temperature anyway. And then I want to make sure that I have my mask, because I'm going to need to wear my mask when I get to the church. I don't need to necessarily put this on in my home, but I do need to have it available for me as soon as I get to the church. The last thing I want to do before I leave my home is I want to run through the checklist um, to make sure that it's okay for me to come to church. The things I want to ask myself, have I tested positive for COVID-19 in the last 14 days? Have I come in contact with anyone that I know has tested positive for COVID-19 in the last 14 days? Our church has all sorts of new protocols Am I unwilling or unable to follow any of the new protocols, the new operating procedures at church? And was the temperature that I just took, was that over 100 degrees? If I can answer yes to any of those questions, I definitely want to stay home today. The last thing I want to ask myself is, am I part of a population that I might be more vulnerable if I were exposed to COVID-19? Now, that's a question you're going to have to answer individually. I know I personally do have some immune issues because I don't have a spleen, but I think it's safe for me to return today, so I'm going to go ahead and come to church. You'll need to answer that question individually, like I said, on your own. And if you think it's safer for you to stay home right now, do that. Continue to worship online. That will continue to be available. Okay, so now I've finally made it to church. Now, I've parked, I'm getting ready to get out of my car. What I want to remind myself is I'm probably going to be parked next to someone who I haven't seen in weeks or maybe even months that I'm super excited about seeing. But I want to still keep a physical distance of at least six feet from that person. For the time being, the education building, including Barter Hall, we're not going to be using those spaces. We're going to just concentrate our worship and our time of in-person gathering in the sanctuary itself. And this is the time to remember the handy dandy little uh, face covering that I brought from the house. Now I'm going to put this on even before I get out of the car, just so I don't forget. I need to remember the true X door is going to be locked. I'm going to ask that everyone who visits the church go around to the front. Ordinarily, we have, over the years, used this space and come through the church office. We want to make sure that we keep our church administrator, Linda Farrow, very safe during this time as well. So if you are one of those people that may be on a committee or a chair of a board, and you have a key to this door, I 
again, we're going to ask you not to use that. And everyone will enter through the front doors of the church. So after all this time, I've made it to the front doors of the church. I'm getting ready to come in. Now when I get here, I'm going to see a couple of reminders. It's going to be this reminder here, reminding me to keep a physical distance from all of my friends. And then there's going to be a reminder about my facial covering. Reminding me to wear it over my mouth and my nose at all times while I'm here in the building. As I come in, the doors are going to be open. So that way I'm not going to need to touch anything. I can keep my hands to myself as I come in. Uh, now right here, there will be a greeter as well. Uh, one of our deacons or one of our faithful volunteers will be here uh, to kind of log you in the way you do when you uh, sign in to the attendance pads, the red friendship pads at the church. But that way you won't need to do it yourself. Uh, this volunteer will also uh, ask any prayer requests that you have that we might lift up in worship when we get to our community prayers. Now, as I come into the building, remembering that I want to keep a physical distance, I want to keep my time in the narthex relatively brief. Say hello to a couple of the volunteers that might be here, and then I'm going to enter the sanctuary quite expeditiously. Now, when I arrive out front, if I don't have a mask, when I come in here, I'm going to see there's lots of masks that are available for me. Lots of different colors. We even have some specifically sized for children. Uh, these are also available if you need an extra or would like to add some to your wardrobe. Because as we know, we'll be using these for months to come. Now right before you go into the sanctuary, located on both sides, you will find our new sanitizing equipment. Now these are touchless. You don't need to touch anything. You'll just stick your hand underneath it. It gives you the perfect amount of solution to sanitize your hands. Make sure to get in between your fingers where those sticky little things like to hide. Now we have done so well over the years training ourselves to make sure we have our name tags on so that we are extravagantly welcome. But for the time being, we're going to ask that you don't put on your name tag. But that's going to, our name tag station will remain here for when we need it in the months to come. The last thing I'll mention about the Narthex are the bathrooms. Of course, the bathrooms will be available if you need them. We do ask that you limit yourself to two people in each restroom at a time so that you can keep a physical distance from each other. In the bathroom, there are no touch soap dispensers exactly like this. They're just full of soap. Uh, so you don't need to touch that anymore either. Just put your hand underneath it and it'll give you the perfect amount of soap. And I know it's a perfect amount because I use it all the time. Now, I've got my mask, I'm sanitized, I'm ready to go into the sanctuary. So as I enter the sanctuary, notice a couple of differences. On the floor, I'll see there's, gonna, there's some one-way traffic signs. So as we enter, traffic will be one direction. We're going to go up the center aisle and exit on the side aisles. When you enter the sanctuary, a volunteer will be here. You can choose which pew you'd like to sit in as long as it's not roped off. Because some of the pews are roped off so that we can keep a physical distance from each other. But when you choose your pew, Make sure you slide all the way in. That way someone else is coming doesn't have to pass over top of you. Now at the entrance here to the sanctuary, you'll notice another change. Our offerings and tithes, there's a basket that will be here. So your gifts to the church you can present here because our deacons will not be passing the offering plates. Likewise, on this side will be the bulletins. You'll get to pick up a bulletin and take that with you to your seat. We do ask that you take these with you when you leave. And then coming on into the sanctuary, of course, we haven't been in here in quite a while, so it's beautiful just to be in here to see it. But you'll see our pews, uh, some of them have been closed off, every other one, so that we might keep distance from each other. Our windows will be opening with the fan circulating so that we can have lots of good circulation going on uh, with air as well. Now these changes might seem a little extraordinary, but what a wonderful gift we have to be able to come back to worship during this time, even as we try to make plans and figure out what these next months of this pandemic will look like. So friends, I look forward to seeing you all very, very soon, and God bless each and every